Welcome everyone, it's the top of the hour, so we'll get started. I'm Dio Agus back in Houston, um, and thank you for joining our GLOMCON seminar series. Today our talk is the discovery of new antigens and membranous nephropathy, and we're excited to have our speaker, Dr. Sanjeev Sethi. Okay, thanks so much uh, for having me here on a Sunday morning, glad to be here. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about the new antigens that uh, we have sort of uh, discovered over the last five or seven years. Uh, it's really uh, a personal journey for me the last six, seven years. And what I'll be sharing with you today is, uh, is that story of the last uh, six, seven years. So I do apologize up front if I don't go too much into the history of membranous, what was known before, okay? Uh, really not much to disclose. So membranous nephropathy, few background slides, a common cause of nephrotic syndrome in the adult white population. We know that the incidence increases as, we, as uh, the patient get older. The mean age in general is 50 to 60 years uh, of age, two to one male dominance, uh, and it's somewhat rare in children, okay? Although you do see a case every now and then. Like I said, it's uh, uh, the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in the adult white population, but you can see it in Asians, Blacks, Hispanics. Incidence is about 10 to 20 million per year. So if you look at the US population of about 400 million, it's not uncommon. We get four to 6,000 new cases every year. And remember this disease does not go away. So we do see a lot of biopsies uh, of membranous nephropathy and a lot of new cases every year. At the Mayo Clinic, uh, we see about 500 biopsies minimum uh, of uh, membranous nephropathy per year. This is the only clinical story that I'm going to share with you. What I was taught when I was a resident or a fellow uh, was this one third rule. That means one third of the patients of membranous nephropathy will go into remission. That means the nephrotic syndrome tends to go away. Or, and the second, uh, one third of these patients will need immunosuppression. And with immunosuppression, maybe they will go into remission. Uh, the first one third goes into remission without any immunosuppression. And the last one third patients do go into end stage disease no matter what you do. So the one third uh, rule still stays good. And I think the reason being that many of these clinical trials and treatment uh, is mixing apples and oranges when it comes to membranous nephropathy. And maybe we can talk about it at the end. So this is the real basic uh, membranous nephropathy introduction. Some people say FSGS is more common than membranous. I don't think so for nephrotic syndrome. Uh, of course, or broad FSGS is more common, but the primary FSGS that results in nephrotic syndrome per se is much less common than membranous nephropathy itself, okay? Uh, this is a, a, the biopsy that uh, we see uh, on, uh, on a regular basis. And I always tell the fellows and, and, and uh, the residents who are rotating with me, please go look at the immunofluorescence, but nothing, like, uh, nothing looks like this on the immuno fluorescence microscopy, okay? So there's granular IgG along the capillary walls. You can see this, it's really bright, three plus staining background is all negative and nothing looks like this. I mean, for most pathologists, we do immunofluorescence microscopy before we look at the light. And once we see this, we know we have a case of membranous nephropathy. So there is this bright granular three plus IgG, obviously targeting something uh, along the capillary walls. But this is classic, okay? So if you see this, nothing looks like this. Maybe a fibrillary or something occasionally fool you, but really nothing looks like this, this granular IgG targeting some antigen along the GBM. So this is what we do first thing in the morning. And then when you go and look at the light microscopy, for most pathologists who do this every day, it's an easy diagnosis because the capillary walls look a little rigid. You know, they, they look very stiff. Uh, if you're good enough and the membranous has been around for a few months or a few years, then the glomerular basement membranes are thickened and you can see basement membrane spikes and pinholes. Uh, it, nowadays, you don't see it that, that, uh, that, that often, you know, the holes, the pinholes and the spikes, because maybe we're biopsying these patients a little earlier. Uh, and then when you do the EM, this is classic. These are subepithelial deposits, these dark deposits that you see. This is what the IgG is sitting out here and probably targeting an antigen in there. So this is the antigen antibody complexes. And this is what that granular GBM staining is. In between the deposits, you have this basement membrane material. Okay, and this basement membrane material is what forms the spikes on the silver stain and PAS stain, okay? And those are the spikes and that's what the PAS. 